this.
After the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices to go and anoint the body of Jesus. Very early on Sunday morning, at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they said to one another, Who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance to the tomb? It was a very large stone. <coughs> then they looked up and saw that the stone had already been rolled back. So they entered the tomb, where they saw a young man sitting on the right, wearing a white robe, and they were alarmed. He said, Don't be alarmed. I know you are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is not here. He has been raised. Look, here is the place where they put him. Now go and give this message to his disciples, including Peter. He's going to Galilee ahead of you. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and ran from the tomb, distressed and terrified. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. On this day of all days, the praises should be loud. On this Easter morning, one word should be on our lips, Alleluia. So are you ready? Christ has died. Christ has risen. Alleluia. I think you can do better than that. The cross and the grave lie empty. Alleluia. Despair, pain, guilt and grief give way to hope and joy. Alleluia. And now for something completely different. To start our Easter celebration this morning, we're going to hear from the Making Music team. Um, they've been meeting for quite a number of months now and practicing various different things. We've done a couple of Christmas recordings, um, but we are now going to, um, well, they are now going to play for you, This Is The Day. It's a hymn, it's number 194 in the hymn books. But they're going to play it through once, and then once they have played it through once, we will join in and sing the first and the second verses with them. You can remain seated, so let's go for it with This Is The Day.
Thank you very much. It takes a lot of courage to come and stand up here and speak to folks. And I have to be honest with you, I think it takes even more courage to come up and play in front of people. Because what you hear in your head and what everybody else hears can be two completely different things. And they're not just playing the organ or the piano on their own, it's bringing a whole load of instruments together. So thank you, that was great. Bill, I'll hand over to you for the intimations. Just uh, one or two short intimations. Uh, an edict will be read in church today and next week prior to a vote on Sunday the 14th of April to include the Arbillet Church family in our union. Copies of the basis of union and in addition copies of the basis of reviewable tenure which we need to accept to start the process of calling a minister to the vacancy in the town are available in the church. The next meeting of Arbroath and District Kirk session will take place on Wednesday the 10th of April at 7pm in Olden Abbey Halls. The agenda and reports will be emailed at the end of the week with hard copies available next Sunday. And a meeting to finalise plans for our new family event taking place on the last Friday of every month will take place on Monday the 15th of April at 7.30pm in Olden Abbey Halls. Anyone who is interested in helping before or at the event is invited to come along. And please note that although this is the last Sunday of the month, there is no tea and coffee being served after today's service. And I am required to read the following edict from the Presbytery of Perth. Notice is given that a meeting of the Congregation of Arbroath and District Church of Scotland will be held in the church at the close of morning worship on Sunday the 14th of April 2024 for the purposes of receiving a basis of union and basis of reviewable charge and conducting a vote. All members on the communion roll and those who have been officially recognised by the Kirk Session as adherents are entitled to vote, provided they are present at the meeting. And this is given at the hand of the Reverend Dr John Ferguson, Presbytery Clerk. Thank you. I make no apology for this. There are perhaps a, a couple, well, one, maybe two extra um, songs or hymns today. And uh, the next one that we're going to sing together is number 410 in the hymn books. Now, um, the last time we sang this was last Easter Sunday. And that's probably because it's Jesus Christ is risen today. So it's difficult to choose at other times of year. So we stand to sing together number 410, Jesus Christ is risen today.
As we reflect on the wonder of the empty tomb this morning, we come together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we greet you this Easter morning. Those of us who are full of joy, ready to roll eggs, to eat chocolate, and enjoy time together with friends and family over the coming holiday. And those who are perhaps not just as joyful too, who despite this season have their own challenges, pain and fear. So we ask that you would come to us this Easter day, risen Lord. You who experienced the prison of fear, the pain of humiliation and the loneliness of rejection, but also found that love was stronger than that fear. Just as you came, risen and unexpected to those first friends of yours who went to the garden anxious and fearful, be with us now and touch us with your peace. Help us on this Easter day to hear the whole of creation and take a deep breath along with you. Help us to dare to believe that in the stone rolled away, we have the possibility of life with you forever. Thank you for your courage-driven love, which knows no limit. Thank you for your ready forgiveness for the things that we get wrong. <coughs> Fan, we pray, the tiny flame of faith within us until it becomes a raging fire, passionate about loving and serving you. And in your name, passionate too about loving and serving one another. So for rising again, for bringing us hope, and for offering us life, we give you all the praise that we can muster, Lord Jesus. We bring you our offerings, and we hand them over to you to bless them and to use them for this family, for this community, and the wider world, that they may know your hope and your love. Hear us now as together we pray the prayer that you taught your friends, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, folks, uh, youngsters or young at heart, would you like to come and join me? Okay, good morning, good morning, good morning. There are some people over there who are hiding, who obviously, are you coming out, Thomas? You want to do a hunt? You don't have to. Okay. A hunt for Easter eggs. Maybe. <laughs> Look, this says egg hunt. However. However. Okay, here's your start. Let me give you some instructions. Okay? When you open each egg, you will find that there are two pieces of paper in the egg. Come and join us. They will need help. Right? Okay, so you've opened the egg, Zara. Would you like to pass the two pieces of paper on? Okay. Right, Olivia, can you tell us what's on that piece of paper? You've got a cave with a stone. Mm -hmm. And what, what does it say? Go to the cave aisle where there is a picture of Orbuff Abbey. Right, so you get the idea that there is a picture that you need as part of the story, but there's also an instruction to find the next egg, okay? And there's no chocolate in them. 
yet. <laughs> yet, okay? So, Olivia, can I just read this out so folks can hear what, what the... So, here we are, folks. They're, they're off on the, on the egg hunt around the church, and the first one that they now have to find is go to the side aisle, right? Go to the side aisle where there is a picture of Arbroath Abbey in the window. They go, right, off you go, go and have a look. So the side aisles are these four windows there or those four windows there. You need to find a picture of the round O window in Arbroath. That's down the middle, Thomas. The side aisle. You're looking for a picture of Arbroath Abbey in the windows. We could be here a while, folks. Our apologies for those on the stream. Um, you can't see them looking around. Did you find it, Thomas? Well, you're the one that was hot. <laughs> folks, over there, you're in the wrong bit. Come this way. Perhaps those who are in the seats near it could give them a clue. No, that's not Arbroath Abbey. Keep going. No. Can you see it? Can you see it? Could you point it out, folks, who are nearby? Oh, you found the egg anyway. <laughs> right, do you want to bring that back forward? Come back here. And I need you to put the eggs down here on the steps. So can you put the first one down with the pictures? That's it. Right, now you open this one, Olivia, and then can we read out the next set of instructions? It's a jar. So the, the picture is a jar, yes, and what does the instruction say? Go to where we collect the used stamps. Go to where we collect the used stamps in the church used stamps we collect used stamps people bring i'm giving you a clue people bring them when they arrive <laughs> sorry they've seen the next clue already <laughs> Right, Olivia, do you want to pass that to somebody else to open? Right then. Okay. So this time we've got a picture of a cross. Do you want to put that down? Yes. Okay. And what does the clue say? Now go to where the recording of the service takes place. I think you've already seen that one. <laughs> the recording. Where do they record it? Oh. You've already opened one, young lady. Yes. Well, how about you give one to somebody else? Give one to Thomas here. There you go. It's been and wriggling about in my hand. Oh, it's been wriggling about in your hand. Right, what have we got now? Oh, Knife. we've got some money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what does the instruction say? Let me see. Yes. The next... The next egg is to be found on the floor above. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. I hope you've not got something on a timer in your ovens. Oh dear. Are they coming? Can you hear them coming upstairs?
Oh yes, we can hear them. Folks, if you can't hear them on the, on the stream, um, there's a lot of thundering footsteps going up the steps. Right, yes, you're in the right place, Thomas. You got it? Right, good. Come on down. It's a good job there's not many more. Eventually, we will have seven eggs and seven different pictures that we need to get in the right order. Right? You'll all be exhausted. Right, Thomas, do you want to pass it on? Would you like to open that, please, and tell us where we're going? Next. Picture of a palm leaf. Okay, that's the palm leaf, yes, aha. Uh -huh. And what do the instructions say? Living on downstairs again on a different side aisle by the bee in the window. Right, a different side aisle with a bee in a... Where are you going, Olivia? <laughs> a different side aisle. <laughs> Yeah? Did you find the bee in the window? No. <laughs> okay, you found the egg. Right, come on then. Open it up. I think you've all had one now, so you can maybe... What does this say? Oh, that's the temple. Yes, uh-huh. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, go to the Lydia window. Ah, go to the Lydia window. Now, Lydia was a lady who wore purple. If you look at Mr. Clark, he is pointing in the right direction. Okay, what we got now? Okay, so we have a picture wine of bread. wine and bread, and then the last clue says... Finally, you'll find the last egg in the place where the minister sometimes talks. She does talk a lot, in a lot of different places. Where else might I go to do... Okay, come on down, girls. She has the chocolate eggs. Yeah. Where are they from? Up there. That's from another day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take those. I've got some more in a minute. Right, okay, last one. Okay, now that's, that looks like the tomb with the stone rolled away. So, how about you get all the pictures? Right? Now, I'm going to read you, and I'll find my glasses, I'm going to read you the story of Holy Week. If you look at all the pictures that you've got, see if you can lay them out in the right order. Okay? Are you ready? They're doing it without the story. <laughs> Olivia? I'm just going to read the story and then see if you can move them while I'm doing it, okay? Oh, you know. Well, let's hope so. The story of the first Holy Week begins on Palm Sunday, when Jesus triumphantly entered Jerusalem on a donkey. The crowds waved the palms and hailed him as king, shouting, Hosanna, okay? You all right with number one? The next day... Jesus and his followers visited the temple where he found lots of traders selling all kinds of animals for sacrifice and bartering over the price, and he overturned the tables. Have you got that one? Okay. Later the same week, Jesus was eating at a table with friends when a lady arrived with a very expensive jar of perfume. 
She poured it over Jesus' feet and dried his feet with her hair. This made Judas, one of Jesus' friends, mad, and he agreed to betray Jesus to the chief priests for 30 pieces of silver. Just a minute. Yeah, that's right. After a meal on the Thursday evening in which Jesus shared bread and wine with his disciples, they went out to a garden, and it was there that Judas led the guards to arrest Jesus. Following his arrest, Jesus faced the religious leaders and Pilate. Though they couldn't find what he that though they couldn't find that he'd done anything wrong, the crowd shouted crucify him, and Jesus was led out of the city and nailed to a cross where he died. At the end of the day, the guards took down his dead body and friends laid it in a tomb with a large stone across. The day after the Passover had finished, three of Jesus' followers came to the tomb with herbs and spices, but they found that the stone had been rolled away and Jesus' body was no longer there. Instead, an angel told them that he had risen. This is the single greatest event in all of history. Have you got them in the right order? A palm branch, a temple, a jar of perfume, 30 pieces of silver, um, the bread and the wine, the cross, the closed tomb and the open tomb. That is excellent. Excellent, right? Well, there we are. That maybe deserves a couple of chocolate Easter eggs. Here we are. You can add, there's a few. You can take them and share them among you. But before you start eating any of them, we're going to sing again. We're going to sing um, a children's song, which is going to be played through the sound system. I don't think we've done it in church before, but it's very, very simple. It's called One, Two, Three, Jesus is Alive. And there are actions. So instead of sharing out the eggs... Do you think we could do the song first and then have the eggs? Would that be okay? Right. Are we ready at the back there? And we will stand to sing. <laughs>
is. Oh, she's there. <laughs> Reading from the New Testament, Acts 10, verse 34 to 43. Acts 10, verse 34. Peter's speech. Peter began to speak. I now realize that it is true that God treats everyone on the same basis. Whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him, no matter what race he belongs to. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know of the great event that took place throughout the land of Israel, beginning in Galilee after John preached his message of baptism. You know about Jesus of Nazareth and how God poured out on him the Holy Spirit and power. He went everywhere, doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of everything that he did in the land of Israel and in Jerusalem. Then they put him to death by nailing him to a cross. But God raised him from death three days later and caused him to appear, not to everyone, but only to the witnesses that God had already chosen, that is, to us who ate and drank with him after he rose from death. And he commanded us to preach the gospel to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God has appointed judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets spoke about him, saying that everyone who believes in him will have his sins forgiven through the power of his name. Amen. Thanks be to God for these readings from his holy word and to Linda for sharing them with us today. As we reflect on the readings and on the amazing res re resurrection of Jesus after his death, we sing again, number 412, if you're using a hymn book. The words will be on the screen, for the strife is o'er the battle won.
Let's pray. Risen Lord Jesus Christ, as we reflect afresh on the empty tomb with the stone that was rolled away, we pray that you would come to us, that we would experience again the wonder, the amazement, even a little awe for what you have done for each and every one of us. And we pray that through our thoughts and my words and the actions of your Holy Spirit, we would know your presence, the presence of the risen Lord with us here again today. Amen. Right, well, I don't know what your preferred genre would be if you're reading a book or watching a film. Um, mine are rom-coms, poor Mike. But um, uh, you will all have different choices, I suspect. Um, and often, the best ones end on a cliffhanger. So if we can go on to the first screen. You don't know what's going to happen thereafter, and you're looking for the next book or the start of the next series and wondering what the next activity would be. So, for example, this is dating me. Well, all these examples are dating me. In the sitcom Friends, there in London, Ross is getting married to Emily, and he stands in the church in front of the minister and says, I take thee, Rachel. And the bride who's called Emily <laughs> just stands looking at him. That's one. Many years earlier, EastEnders, um, the days when, I don't know if she's still in it, I don't watch it anymore, when Kat Slater was in EastEnders. Is she still in it? She is still in it, okay. Well, um, she had a much younger sister, Zoe, who wasn't behaving herself. And there was a building up to this and building up to this. And Zoe says to her sister, Kat, you can't tell me what to do because you ain't my mother. And of course, the answer comes, oh, yes, I am. And then the music plays again. Or... Um, there are always cliffhangers in uh, programs like Doctor Who. Don't really watch Doctor Who, but I know that lots of the series end on a, well, what's going to happen next and where will the Doctor be next? And who can forget, you lot down here are far too young, but who can forget Dallas? <laughs> and how many series did we go on with Who Shot JR? <laughs> cliffhangers. Okay? The reason's deliberate, isn't it? They want people to think about what happens next. They want you to read their next book or watch the next series. They want you to start talking about it with other people and wondering what would happen. Now, I'm not saying that that was the intention behind Mark's gospel reading that Linda and Bill and I shared with you at the start of today's service. I'm not saying that was the intention behind the reading, but Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 8, are probably the end of the original Mark's gospel. There are some manuscripts that were found without the following verses, verse 9 <coughs> onwards. And today, the majority of scholars would probably say that these verses were added on a bit like other authors have added on to the Ian Fleming Bond books to keep things going. And so they maybe felt that it was unfinished and therefore they added verses on. But today, on this Easter Sunday, it's Mark's gospel that is the one that we're asked to look at. And so I want you to forget the other verses and just to think about the eight verses that Bill and Linda and I read. 
forget Thomas and the road to Emmaus and the other things that are in the other Gospels, the post-resurrection experiences, and just sit today with these verses, focusing simply on these women. So these three women who had been present at Jesus' crucifixion and then went and bought herbs on the Saturday evening once the Sabbath was over, these women now come, as you can see in the image, to the tomb in the morning. And they're coming still mourning, still full of grief, still wondering in practical terms how they're even going to be able to open the tomb because it's a massive stone that has been placed over it. The first surprise is that the stone has already been rolled away for them. They're not going to have to find an army of volunteers to move it. The second surprise, as they stand at the entrance and boldly walk in, is that there is a young man sitting inside. And then the third and the greatest surprise of all are his words. Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Just sit with that for a moment. Imagine how that must have felt. And then the angel goes on to say, look, look, he is not here. Look at the place where they laid him. Now, go and tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Now, the women in Mark's gospel are so concerned and so fearful and so awestruck by what they have just seen and heard that they don't do what the angel says. They run away in fear and they tell no one. No wonder. If it was me, I suspect I would have done exactly the same thing because nothing that angel has told them makes sense, does it? The idea that a person would rise from the dead is really just as unbelievable as the concept of a messiah being crucified. And so Mark's gospel, his original gospel, ends on a cliffhanger. If that's all you've got, and that's all you're reading, what happens next? How can this possibly be good news? Two things. The first is to say that if we look back in Mark's gospel, in the first chapter, in chapter one, the Greek verb to follow is used as Jesus asks the disciples to follow him. And then as we go through the gospel and Peter declares Jesus to be the Christ in chapter eight, the same verb is used again when Jesus says to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, and follow me. And then later in that same chapter, the same verb is used again to, when Jesus says, whoever would follow me must take up his cross and walk. Mark's gospel has a theme of following. Excellent timing. Mark, he has a theme of following. And here, there is nothing different. The angel says, Jesus has gone on ahead. Follow him to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he said. So, the women don't immediately say anything. They sit 
with what they have seen and heard. And then they follow. So perhaps today is a day to sit with the wonder before we move on to follow. But the other reading that we heard today from Acts is what happened when the disciples began to follow. And Peter is with Cornelius. Cornelius, a Gentile and a Roman, in perhaps a position of some jeopardy. And it's in this opportunity, speaking to Cornelius, that Peter, rather than emphasize Jesus' birth, and rather than talk about his life and his ministry, though he does so generally, it's here that Peter emphasizes the importance of Jesus' death and his resurrection. And having anticipated that, that we then move on and follow. So if we go on to the next slide, this Easter day, remember the account of Jesus' resurrection in Mark, the cliffhanger of the ending, leaving you awestruck, leaving you wondering, making you want to read more, making you want to think about it more, making you want to talk to one another about it more and share the conversation that Jesus has risen and is no longer in the empty tomb. Remember Peter, who went out and shared that news with others and the early church was born and flourished. What tasks, when we have reflected and read more and talked more, what tasks has Jesus to undertake, has, has Jesus for us to undertake for him today? To take the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the earth. Amen. Now we're going to sing again. It isn't, it's a hymn that I have no idea why is, it's not in CH4, but it's not. We're going to stand to sing in Christ alone, and the words are on the screen.
Folks, we're now going to spend some time in prayer for others and for ourselves. And I'm very conscious today that as we celebrate Easter, for some of our friends around us in the area, it's a day of mixed emotions. Today is the final Sunday of worship in Colliston Church, and it's also the final Sunday in St. Margaret's in Forfa and in Guthrie. And so I will include prayers for our friends in all of these places as we meet now in prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, born for us, living for us, dying and then rising again for us. How can we begin to praise you? May we follow behind you, not only on this day, but on every day. We confess that it can be hard to take in what you have done. But give us the courage, we pray, to believe. Let our jaws drop in wonder at the marvelous, miraculous thing you have accomplished. And let our hearts dare to rejoice that you did it all with our names on your lips. So when our doubts and fears get in the way of all that this day promises, speak to us of love, of hope, of peace, and of joy. And may these emotions extend into our friends and family our local community and the wider world for which we now pray. Lord Jesus Christ, this is a troubled and divided world where fear runs so deep, hopes are so often dashed and dreams so often broken with love, peace and joy hard to find. In a world that's waiting, hurting and longing, searching for hope and crying out for meaning with a reason to believe in the future. We remember today the faith in the future that you brought to so many through your coming and your resurrection. We pray that you would come again in your living power and bring new life to all remembering especially today the places where there are fears for people's safety and for those places where people may have forgotten a time before that fear. Help them and us to come nearer a place and time without such strife and mourning, a place where there are no more tears On this Easter day, we think of your church celebrating around the world. And today we think particularly of church families in our area, our friends in Colliston, in Guthrie, and in St. Margaret's, in Forfa. We pray that as they celebrate your resurrection, and give thanks for all that has happened in their buildings down the years, they would have the ability to cherish the faithfulness of all who have been there before, and that you would strengthen us to feel together united in faith and in love. And Lord Jesus Christ, as we do every week, we now name before you those people and those situations that we are particularly conscious of, that lie on our hearts. Those friends and family who may be celebrating this day, and those who may be struggling with physical or with mental health. Those who are fearful of rejection or of what the future may hold. 
who are anxious over work undone or not having enough time to complete everything. Living Lord Jesus, we pray that you would come to them this day with the joy of your risen presence. Help us and all people everywhere to live as Easter people, loved, forgiven, and set free to enjoy an eternity with you, our wonderful living Lord. All these things we offer to you in your name. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is number 419. Um, the words are on the screen. We stand to sing together, Thine be the glory. Go now in the risen life of God. Go with the blessing of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to rest and remain with you and with those whom you love and with those who are strangers to you. May the blessing of God remain now and forevermore.
Please have a seat while the duty team open the doors. I will gather my eggs together and see you at the door. Whatever you are doing this Easter, I hope you have a lovely time.